Hi! In this video, we are going to talk about the process of autophagy. Autophagy is a Greek word where auto means self and phagy means eating. That means autophagy is a process in which cell eats its own component. It's kind of like a cellular cannibalism. So autophagy involves the delivery of cytoplasmic waste material, let's say a non-functional protein or a lysosome or let's say a non-functional mitochondria into a structure called autophagosome. Eventually, the autophagosome is actually fusing with the lysosome and thereby recycling the components inside these autophagosomes. It is important to understand that autophagy is an evolutionary conserved survival machinery. From eukaryotes to prokaryotes, every cell can undergo autophagy under stressed situation. Let's say a cell is undergoing nutrient deprivation. Under these circumstances, cell need to generate energy. And that is done by autophagy, where it recycles the existing nutrients and from that it generates energy. Now let us look at the mechanism of autophagy and the context to understand this process better. So autophagy starts with a molecular step known as initiation and nucleation. A complex known as initiation complex helps in this process. So the membrane that forms the autophagosome is actually derived from the endoplasmic reticulum. An important kinase known as ULK1 or unc like kinase 1 helps in this initiation process. And ALK1 ALK is actually an important regulator of autophagy. In a moment it would be clear. But once this initiation complex has uh, cleaved a little bit portion of the ER membrane, a further complex known as PI3K complex would be further elongating this particular membrane. And it would be known as the nucleation process. So all of these steps are kind of interrelated. In PI3 complex, Bekelin is an important protein that we need to know. But we don't need to know intricate details of all of these proteins and how they in, are involved in this procedure. We need to understand the big picture. Let us talk about the ULK kinase once more. So ULK kinase is regulated by several physiological con context such as nutrient deprivation, starvation, etc. So let us imagine we are under a situation of starvation. So in this case, the ATP and AMP ratio would be altering, right? ATP level drops down whereas AMP levels are rising up. These relative change in ATP to AMP ratio is sensed by molecular sensors such as AMP kinase. And AMP kinase can activate ULK and thereby activating the process of autophagy. It is kind of telling the cell right now there is a nutrient deprivation situation. You need to survive and start the process of autophagy. At the same time, there are other molecular regulators such as mTOR. mTOR is also a nutrient sensor. Whenever there is too much nutrient is present in the cell, mTOR would phosphorylate ULK and inhibit ULK and prevent the autophagy. It's kind of telling the cell that we have enough nutrient in store so we don't need to recycle things to get generate energy. Makes sense, right? But under nutrient deprivation, AMP kinase would eventually activate inhibitors of mTOR and thereby promoting the autophagy or autophagy mechanism. Next step of autophagy is elongation of the isolation membrane and this process involves several ATG genes which are involving in the autophagy process. This includes ATG12, ATG5 and many more. One thing is really significant here is the LC3. LC3 is an important regulator of autophagy and LC3 is an important marker to mark the cells which are undergoing autophagy. Eventually, LC3 gets converted to LC3-2 and the autophagic vesicle forms nicely and the autophagosome is now ready to be fused with the lysosome. Eventually, lysosome and autophagosome fuse to each other and thereby the nutrient recycling take place. Now, here we talk about only one type of autophagy which is known as macroautophagy. But other than macroautophagy, there are other types of autophagy like microautophagy, 
chaperone mediated autophagy and about these processes i'm not getting into details in this video but there would be separate video on all of these processes and you can get all this video in the i button very soon now let us imagine a situation where our body is undergoing starv starvation situation it's kind of like a stress to our body under prolonged starvation our body would eventually perform autophagy let's say we are starving for more than 16 hours so our body would eventually do autophagy and it's like a recycling mechanism by which body can get all the essential energy from the recycled nutrients so let's say we have we need a functional enzyme to uh, cope up with the stress but this enzyme requires raw materials like amino acids and amino acids can be obtained from the foods but under starvation situation we don't have food availability right so obviously where can these amino acids be obtained and the answer is simple the autophagy mechanism would come into play it would take all the non-functional protein degrade it get all the amino acids which are the building block of the amino acid and from that cell can build a functional enzyme it makes a lot of sense that how under stress situation all the unnecessary garbages can be recycled to make whatever we need at that moment so this is a minimalistic approach that cell takes for efficient nutrient recycling it has been seen that under different disease conditions like neurodegenerative diseases like alzheimer's disease the key pathology is protein accumulation or amyloid plaque scientists believe that this amyloid plaque can be actually uh, recycled if we induce the process of autophagy but still it's a point of debate now let us talk about or summarize the physiological importance of autophagy we already understood a little bit of that but autophagy is a survival mechanism that helps us to cope up with stress env environment and it's kind of like an evolutionary conserved mechanism autophagy can both promote cancer growth or it sometimes it can also work against cancer so active research is going on in the field of cancer many neurodegenerative diseases are associated with the dysregulation of autophagy process many pathogens are degraded by autophagy this includes mycobacteria shigella hsv1 etc so overall what we have learned from this video is dysregulation of the autophagy can lead to several diseases like inflammatory bowel disease neurodegenerative disease and it can also alter the way host interacts with the pathogen so if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to support my channel on patreon you, if you are an indian viewer you can support my channel by scanning this qr code and paying some money to my channel so your small contribution means a lot to me anyway you can subscribe to my channel and please share it with your friends my detailed courses are also present in an academy you can use my code ap10 to get a 10 percent off see you in the next video thank you for watching